Hi there. A couple of months ago, I posted a video about compiling GDScript for the Godot game engine to Wasm with the idea of speeding things up and having some kind of interesting new internal way of running code in Godot. It was a lot of work, but it was also some fun. And I was prepared to expect that no one would actually get back to me from the Godot team after publishing this video. And I thought I might try to stick through with it anyway. And they actually are very busy people with a lot of people trying to get their attention. So it's okay if I don't hear from them. It really is. And mostly, nobody did get back to me. Although it turns out that just three days ago, a Godot maintainer actually did comment on my video. And although I was prepared them up for crickets after mentioning that I was working on this topic, not hearing back from Godot maintainers did demotivate me somewhat. And I moved on to other things meanwhile. And one distraction I had was joining the GMTK Game Jam. And I was curious to try out Pico 8, which I'd never done before. And Pico 8 is a fantasy console that uses the Lua programming language and has 8-bit aesthetic and kinds of constraints to it that people typically use for making games. So I was learning a brand new engine slash framework and I submitted early. So I did not use all the time I could have taken. Life's busy. And despite that, I still got in the top third for enjoyment among submissions for the game that I made. So how did I learn something completely new and submit early and still do relatively well on at least one criterion? That's because Pico 8 is very simple and integrated and just really fun to work with. Stepping in, I don't think things like what resolution will I use or what programming language will I use or what colors will I use or how will I draw my maps? And typically when I'm working solo, I never get around to adding audio, but because it was so easy to do in Pico 8, I have some sound effects in this game. And it's easy just to run and try out the game and get back to code. I loved this experience so much that I started thinking about how can I have a Pico 8-like experience that scales up more. People talk about, for example, doing prototypes in Pico 8, such as the game Celeste, or various other examples out there, but then sometimes they transition to other engines or frameworks for the final game. Although there are at least some Pico 8 games available on Steam. But overall, as far as enjoying making a game and making progress fast, I'd never done better before than I did in Pico 8. And so without going into all the details of my plans, I started making something that acts a lot like Pico 8 and is currently very unfinished, but with the idea that I want to use a language that will run faster by default. Yes, Lua JIT's available for Lua and has integrated tools, though all I have so far is sprite editing and code editing. And both of these are very rudimentary so far, but I can do things like run a game. Woohoo! And this really is the live code here I'm editing. If I change my scale to four, and run it again. Now I have a bigger dude. Undo redo even works. And while this code editor is rudimentary, I've been working from it from scratch on top of the Ebby Tengen game engine or game framework for Go. This is a remarkably full featured framework that I think will give me what I need to get the job done. So I have easy access to vector fonts or even vector drawing, sound, input, and so on. But a lot of you might have the question, why did I choose Go as the language for the thing I'm working on? I've typically not done a lot of Go in the past, and I've typically promoted WebAssembly, for example, as I was just discussing earlier in this video. And there's actually a related question is, does the editor need to be written in the same language as what the framework is designed for? And not really, but in this case, I thought it was useful to familiarize myself with the underlying technology instead of just using it for the games only. So anyway, here's a list of widely used languages that I ought to be considering. And there's some less well-known languages that might have been good choices as well, such as D or Odin. And of course, I've long wanted to make my own language also. But for this, I decided to focus on mainstream languages. I wanted to have easy pre-compiling to native executables and also to web. And I wanted to be a fast compiler and I also wouldn't mind if it didn't feel all that different from Lua either. But languages that I can't reliably trust to compile fast, to run fast on web and on native, leaves out, for example, Python, 
Ruby, Lua, despite LuaJIT, R, PHP, and others here also. I also want robust open source tooling available. I haven't been convinced Kotlin has that, despite IntelliJ. VB, probably not either. And in terms of both kicking things off and running things through, especially once interesting dependencies get involved, that'll take out a number of others here, such as maybe Java, C Sharp, Rust, C++. So our list is getting pretty small. And while my experience with Swift is limited, I'm not terribly convinced the tooling it has is what I'm looking for. And while Flutter is nice for Dart if that's what you want, I couldn't find bindings to simpler multimedia frameworks of the sort I was looking for. Again, maybe my lack of experience in the ecosystem. C could be awesome, but I also want this to be easy for newcomers, and not getting lost in memory issues and other things as well, so I'll take out C. And while web frameworks, including things like Tori or Wales or Electron or whatever else might be interesting options for JavaScript and TypeScript, and really, I'm talking about TypeScript here. And while web-based things such as the Monaco editor would save me a lot of time and are very full-featured, I don't like the weight of carrying that around. For example, on my Raspberry Pi 4, web browsers and VS Code are just remarkably sluggish. I don't want to deal with that. So that left me with Go. And it's interesting because I also don't have a lot of experience working in Go in a serious way. So as I've gotten busy using it for my new project, I've been learning more about it, and I might have things to say about that in the future. And I do have some concerns about garbage collection and how that relates to game dev, and I want to address that in the future as well. But Go does compile to native and web and quickly and has a very robust and fast performing open source tooling available for it. And there's also a lot of documentation out there and discussion and ways to get help. And with Ebitengine, it has everything I need for 2D game dev. So Hajime Hoshi, the creator of Ebitengine, is one of my heroes right now. And if I do make progress here on my engine slash editor, maybe someday there'll be some kind of WebAssembly support as well. But that's not my priority. Again, one of the goals here is to remove choices from people, including myself, so I can focus on getting the actual work done. Oh, and one last thing. The framework I'm building on top of Ebitengine, I already have out as open source, but for the editor itself, I currently don't plan to make it open source. It won't be lock-in though. I'll explain more in the future. If you like the video, be sure to subscribe. Bye y'all.